the last class uh, the digital system design uh, was introduced. Uh, we are discussing about the uh, specification and the implementation of digital systems. Today we will see that uh, what do we mean by implementation of digital system. Uh, implementation means how the system is constructed from smaller and simpler components called modules. The modules can vary from simple gates to complex processes. That means that one system uh, has a related components, we have defined digital system like that. Now these components, again a set of components or more than one components that is clustered together and we are calling that is as a module. And this module can be a set of gates, a combination of simple gates or it can be a complex processor. Now digital system follows some hierarchical implementation. So today we will see that um, what do we mean by this hierarchy and how that one large digi digital CM, digital system can be designed. First we see that what do we mean by modular design. See so, uh, if we see first we take one page and see that the way we have discussed that as if this is some function or behavior, behavior of the system and some inputs are fed and outputs are taken. Now, if th this will be a large uh, if this is a large system, what we can do? We can break this thing as a some smaller blocks. Say this behavior as if this is some some smaller blocks again it has its each of the blocks has its own function so this is f1 f2 function and behavior means that it is normally it is used the same um, definition so f5 x6 say these are the uh, uh, some blocks that means this as if this uh, large system is broken into some smaller blocks there must be some interconnection between these blocks ok. So, these each smaller blocks we are calling this is a module. So, mainly this is divide and conquer means the large system uh, is divided and then the smaller module is designed first. Modules are designed and built separately and then assembled to form the subsystem. Modules are designed and built separately then assembled to form the subsystems. Uh, why we are doing this thing? Because it simplifies the implementation and debugging. Because uh, always it is true that uh, instead of instead of designing a large system, if I partition 
that thing into smaller blocks say I am partitioning in this way and then first to to design this one this module say this is module 1 or design this module say module 2 first it will be easier. Another thing is if there is some problem that means just to debug if the full system is is not working if it does not work properly then first we will identify that whether that each module the smaller modules are working or not then it must be instead of uh, testing uh, the whole system or instead of debugging the whole system the debugging of smaller modules are always uh, much better it is advantageous. Now, one of the major factors for the cost effectiveness of digital systems that comes from this modular design. Now, we see what do we mean by top down, top down design approach. So, it starts at the top root and works down by successive refinement. and decomposes the system into subsystem and then subsystem into simpler and smaller subsystems and so on. When it will stop because what we are doing one system first we are breaking or partitioning into smaller subsystems then once uh, subsystem again we are breaking that uh, smaller subsystems. So, when you will stop? So, we will stop when subsystem can be realized by directly available module. So, these modules what uh, uh, just now we have uh, discussed that module that as if these modules are modules are designed and built separately and these are available to us. So, uh, when we get this subsystem as the modules which are available then we will uh, stop that thing. So, this is top down design approach. Now, if we see pictorially <coughs> then say I have first one uh, say some I am taking that this is my this is the system that I want to design. Okay. Now, top down approach means as if these are uh, the in the second level say as if these are some blocks say some smaller subsystems these are these are smaller subsystem. is a smaller subsystems. Now, say each block say this is number of subsystems are there. Now, as if these modules again uh, partition into some smaller modules which are actually re realized by some gates logic gates. These are by logic gates. Then again, these gates, th this is a set of gates. Set, say this is S1, S2, S3. Then this S1 is again partitioned into say some transistors. Okay. So these are a combination or set of say a set of transistors. say T 1, T 2, T 3, T 4. So, why it is called top down as if the for, for this system this is first we have it is coming from this direction it is partitioned 
into subsystems. Then say this subsystem only this one is uh, broken as a group of smaller subsystem which consists of a number of gates. Now, again say it is coming from that here we are getting that a number of as if smaller it is again partitioned into smaller sub blocks and these are nothing but a set of transistors set of transistors these are transistors. So, we are coming from the top the system is given and then how we can realize the system how we can implement that thing. So, this is called the top down uh, top down approach. Now, another is the bottom up design. Now, in the top down approach already we have seen that we have started from the top that as if that is the route which is given that which system I have to design and then I am partitioning and partitioning smaller and smaller subsystems until I get a realizable module. Now, this is totally the reverse approach that it starts at the leaves and puts pieces together to build up the design. So, it starts given a uh, subsystem uh, given a system that I want to design that as if we are starting from the leaf and then subsystems are assembled to form a bigger subsystems and when it stops it stops when required functional specification is achieved. So, here what we are doing that totally re, uh, reverse concept say as if what is available uh, realizable module say that small modules say this is a some transistors or it can be logic gates also say I am taking this one ok this is a this is a set first these are as these two are assembled then say we are these are assembled I am getting a bigger subsystem bigger sus subsystem then again say from another I have got another bigger subsystem. So, these are these are some bigger subsystem. Now, again I am going up say that I got the the specification that I want to realize means the behavior that I want to implement that my function that my function f ok. So, I stop here. So, actually here we are approaching from the bottom and stops when the uh, behavior of the function is given. Now, what is the disadvantages of top down or bottom up design? So, there is no systematic procedure exist for decomposition. So, in case of top down approach actually we are decomposing and in case of bottom up we are assembling the or we are um, assembling the uh, smaller modules. So, when we will stop actually there is no uh, systematic procedure for this it totally depends on the expertise of the designer. So, this is a very big disadvantage of top down or bottom up design. Now, which is better because all are modular design top down or um, bottom up one we are approaching from top one we are approaching from the bottom. So, in practice that actually both top down and the uh, bottom up design are used they are needed. So, 
top down uh, is normally used to divide and conquer to handle the complexity. Say if it is a bigger uh, um, system already I mentioned that to debug, debugging is a big problem that for a large system if it does not work correctly then where is the fault just to detect that thing to identify the fault is a big problem. Rather if we partition the full system and we take separately the each uh, smaller modules and we check um, separately then it will be easier to identify that where the fault is. So, normally uh, for an another thing is that that to design the smaller modules will be much more efficient and obviously complexity will be much lesser if we handle only one uh, smaller modules. And the bottom up is needed because a, in a well designed system the structure is influenced by what primitives are available. This is very important because nowadays normal this what we are calling that available realizable module. So, nowadays this is called the library one available library is there. What do we mean by library? So, library means that already some smaller modules so, that are actually designed and realized. Say if we take an example, say I have uh, I am taking a um, two, in, 2, 2 input and get simple example I am thinking 2, 2 input and get and 1, 2 input or get ok or get. Now, uh, what we see that that this this is one we can tell that this is one module normally often used it is very much used in every design. So, this is my four inputs of the module one smaller modules and one output ok. So, two input two in and one out module this is one module. Now, instead of um, designing every time the smaller modules what we can do we can design and test and we make this is as a one one module who, which has two input and one output and this is the function say f 1 this I am telling this is one subsystem one module. Now, once it is design we are telling that this area f 1 is a realizable available module. Now, say I have some I have some library say this I have some library is there. Now, library means already the pre designed pre tested modules are there say one is that f 1 is there and its specification already we have uh, defined the specification of one. Uh, system or subsystem say some f 2 is available similarly some f 4 and up to f n say in number of. Now, what we will be doing that if now I want to design a system then these are all my library is with me that means all these f 1 to f n this n number of modules are available these are pre, -desi pre designed and pre tested modules. So, what I will be doing that instead of uh, designing again designing from the scratch I will just take from this thing from my library and I will put that thing as a block. So, that is why it is very much helpful. So, this that is why bottom up uh, bottom up means that as if we are taking what is available that library is available what modules are already are there we are just selecting some modules and then we are assembling together to get a larger modules. So, that is why that both top down and bottom up de designs are important. Uh, now, we take a example of hierarchical design this is a very common um, uh, example of our uh, computer system digital computers. So, it has already we have seen the last day the same uh, um, picture 
that it is our uh, memory and this is my CPU and that instructions and data that are passing between memory and CPU addresses are address lines are there. And see here this memory, memory system actually this is this we can take that as if this is a uh, larger subsystem because this, this full thing is a system, my digital computer is a system. So, it has now I am considering as if two subsystems memory systems and CPU system. Now, again this memory system, this is a subsystem, this is partition, this, we, this can be viewed as if this is a combination of two other smaller subsystem that is called the main memory and the cache memory. Disks are can be a third party, we will see later. Similarly, the CPU, this is a larger subsystem and the again if we partition this thing that some smaller subsystems, this is a register file and ALU the arithmetic logic unit. So, this is the very good example of the uh, hierarchical design. So, now we see if we think that this is as a tree and computer is the root, computer is the root means that I, I want to design a digital computer. So, this is my system. So, first it is partitioned, it is partitioned into two, this is my memory and this is my CPU. Now, this memory is a larger subsystem. So, it is partitioned into smaller subsystems, this is disk, main memory, cache memory. Similarly, the CPU I can think is a combination of two smaller subsystems, the arithmetic logic unit and the registers. So, uh, we have uh, some idea that um, how we can, uh, so in this class what we will see that or what we will uh, read that how we can design this uh, smaller subsystems and then we will assemble or the reverse thing also top down approach given a uh, larger subsystem system, how we can partition into smaller one, how it can be designed. So, we will learn in this class. Now, another uh, thing that is very important nowadays uh, is the digital design process and the what is the current trend. So, all of we know that uh, now the dimension mainly the size of the circuits are changed enormously and due to the uh, advent of uh, VLSI that very large scale integration circuits. Because um, that means that within one smaller area even the millions of uh, logic gates or you can think that millions of circuits circuitry I can put. So, one thing is uh, very clear that it is almost impossible uh, to design it manually and that is why now the automation or the computer automation is needed. So, for that purposes that this some computer aided design tools are introduced in the process due to its increased size and complexity. So, uh, instead of uh, doing manually if we use this uh, CAT tools and for the uh, different levels because if it is a that lower level just now what uh, um, I mentioned that it is a say transistor level or in the upper level it is a gate level or even in the upper level it is a block level means some some of the gates are clustered to form a <coughs> uh, module. Then uh, uh, in every level, so what will be the flow whether if it is a top down or if it is a bottom up what will be the flow that I want to discuss. So, designers want to standardize the design procedure starting from the design idea to get the design implemented. 
the so called design flow. Now, new CAD tools are based on hardware description language to improve the process. Now, what do we mean the, by this, this hardware description language? Because so far we know that programming language that we call that software languages, say our C, Pascal, C++, Java. Now, see here I want to uh, uh, design a circuit, a digital computer. See my co components are uh, um, where that transistors or if it is at some of the transistors I assemble it will be a gate, one end gate, one end gate. So, uh, how we can specify that as it is a tool that computer uh, tool means say it is a software. So, I have to uh, tell that uh, tool or the software that this is the specification of the circuit or this is the, if we consider the system then we can tell that this is the specification of the system means this behavior I want to realize. So, for that purposes that some hardware description language that means that as its name implies that this is the language that will tell us that see these are the this is a block that represents AND gate this is this represents the flip flop this is a where like that this is a clock. So, this is the um, some uh, um, language HDL languages are proposed normally VHDL Verilog these are the uh, different type of uh, languages we use. Now, these HDLs provide formats for representing the outputs of various design steps. An HDL based design automata tool transforms for its HDL input into an HDL output which contains more hardware information. So, this is uh, just now what we to told that there are some uh, uh, design flow. we mark this line this is very important that what will be the design flow let's see see if we start that from the design idea means the problem that I want to solve. So, this is this I am telling this is my design this is my design idea. Then this is called some behavioral design. Behavioral design means, so first thing what problem I want to solve or what system I want to design. So, the behavior of the design that is clearly that should be clearly told in this uh, step, the first step should be that thing that we are defining as a behavioral design. What will be the output? Then the outputs are flow graph or pseudo code like that. Then this is a from that uh, behavioral stage then some smaller blocks some blocks we are partitioning this is called the data path design. And what is the output? These are some bus and register structure later I am giving example of this thing. And then it is a logic design. So, this is again modular that again I am partitioning into smaller blocks and these are these blocks are now synthesized or realized by logic gates and or not etcetera. So, the outputs are get where list or normally this is called the net list this is called the net list. And 
Now, this gates I want that actually this is a again it is partition because one gate I can always realize by some transistors. So, this is we call the physical design. So, the output is transistor list that means a set of transistors assembling together form a gate and this we call that layout means how they are placed in this set of transistors how they are placed that within the specific area say that my uh, chip the what we normally we have seen that IC chip. So, there this is it is called that layout how it is placed how it is uh, partitioned what will be the size this is called the layout. Now, it is it can be manufactured. So, this is some manufacturing stage and ultimately we get the our IC chip or board. So, these we can tell that this is our digital design flow. That means, if we summarize that starting from the design idea, design idea means that uh, what system I want to design say or digital computer or a digital calculator that can be your design. So, first we will get the behavioral design what will be the function then data path design that it will be uh, some uh, block diagram design uh, that specifies each block specifies some bus register structures. Then it is logic design means that the same thing is realized by a number of gates and wires. Then again it is uh, simplified or it is realized by transistors because ultimately the transistors I have to on a silicon that IC chip that is a nothing but a C piece of silicon. So, they are actually the transistors, transistors will be fabricated. So, then it will be manufactured and we get the digital IC. So, this is the uh, digital design flow. Now, uh, just now I that in the uh, design flow say the data path design that once the behavioral design is uh, unambiguously uh, written or defined then the using some bus and register structures we can take the data path design. So, see this is my data and these are nothing but registers now just we can think as if these are some storage. So, there are several storages are there and there are some interconnections this is my main logic unit and these are uh, connected with the procedure for control of movement of data between registers and buses means these are my control unit. So, this is the the data path of design or what we call that that bus and register structure. Now, another very important thing that uh, we can think that is the Y diagram. See these we are that as if that um, already we have uh, uh, discussed that uh, the modular design approach mainly the top down or the bottom up approach. Now, and, and parallelly when we uh, um, I introduced the design flow I told that uh, the different type of uh, um, definition that behavioral or whether it is structural whether it is in the physical means that when it is realized by gate or transistors. So, uh, that the different approaches and that act to uh, get the or to achieve the goal to get the design to be implemented that uh, one Y diagram is normally defined. So, this is the this is the my 
this is my voyager 1. So, here this is a behavioral domain that means, um, the how many ways I can solve a problem. So, behavioral that that one uh, um, say behavioral domain means already the way the system I have defined this is the behavior that behavior means that if this is these are my inputs these are my inputs then this is the output that means if I 1 is my input O 1 is my output if I 2 is the input then O 1 O 2 is the output. So, in this way that for a specific inputs that what should be the okay, this is this should be i n o n. So, what should be the um, input output uh, specification that clearly defines the behavioral domain. If it is given then what we can do that I can uh, write that uh, programs to get this behavior. So, I can get this thing. Okay. Again that y diagram I am telling. So, now once it is given that means, that program again it is then it comes to our that physical domain it comes to this side I am telling that this arm as if this arm is that there are three arms and this arm is the that, that it is realized by transistors then says and ultimately it comes to the that digital chip or the board this we are calling the physical domain. Another is the structural domain means the another arm that we are representing we call that given a system to be implemented always that it is uh, similarly the uh, similar uh, of the top down approach that I can partition the, this thing into some smaller blocks or smaller modules and uh, this can be that some say adders, gates, registers. So, these are this is the structure. So, act as if the structural domain structural domain then from the adders gates we come to this point. And obviously, we know that uh, adder whether it is a adder, gate, register, decoder, any other uh, um, uh, functions always that we can implement by a or we can realize by a set of transistors. So, this is a very well known uh, um, uh, why um, we call that uh, um, why uh, picture the or why structure that uh, for uh, how we can uh, use the or how we can implement the digital design, how we can approach. Okay. So, behavioral representation, now how behavioral representation describes how a particular design should respond to a given set of inputs. So, mainly we are discussing about the CAT tools because now it is that uh, just for its size it is a huge number of uh, circuits. So, um, uh, how we can um, represent this behavior of a systems. So, behavior may be specified by Boolean equations we will see later we will read these Boolean equations. Then tables of inputs and output values just now I have shown that behavior always the behavior can be represented that if this is the input this will be the output if i 1 is the input o 2 is the i 1 is the input o 1 is the output i 2 is the input o 2 is the output. So, this set of input of input and outputs clearly defines the behavior. Another way I can tell that algorithms written in standard high level computer language or in special hardware description language or that one behavior easily I can uh, described by computer language which is nothing but some English type language we know that software language the C language is English type. So, using this 
uh, computer language always I can do that thing. Now, here one thing is very special because here it is not software. I have to specify my circuit the transistor, the gate, the decoder, the adder, multiplier. So, for that I need hardware description language or we call HDL instead of the software language. So, in this way that I can fit my behavioral representation to the cat tool. Now, I take one example then it will be clear what do we mean by behavioral representation. Say an n bit adder is constructed by cascading n 1 bit adders. What is um, uh, adder? So, just I, I want to add nothing, but say n bit means yesterday we have seen that um, that binary only uh, only two digit we lose 0 or 1. Okay. Now, say it is a say 4 bit some 4 bit numbers I am taking. Okay. So, 4 bit numbers we know that 12 means our decimal 12 means it is actually um, 1 0 1 1 0 0 and say our decimal 10 is 1 0 1 0. So, this is the 2 4 bit numbers I want to add this is I am calling that 2 4 bit adder. So, what I need? I need 4 1 bit adder this is this is 1 bit bit 1 this is 1 bit this is 1 bit and this is 1 bit. So, I have to add this 1 bit I have to add this to 1 bit I have to add this to 1 bit I have to add this to 1 bit that means 2 that means a 4 bit adder at a 4 bit adder So, what I can tell one 4 bit adder can be realized because it is hierarchical. So, 4 number of 4 number of 1 bit adder this is as a whole 2 4 bit numbers I want to add this is 1 for num 4 bit number this is 1 4 bit number and for that what I want actually 1 2 3 4 phone number of 1 bit adder. So, an n bit adder is constructed. So, if n equal to 4 I have given the example. So, for a, uh, an n bit adder is constructed by cascading in uh, cascading n 1 bit adders. Now, a 1 bit adder has two apparent inputs a and b, a carry input c, a carry output c o and a sum output s. What do we mean? Because c now 1 bit adder I am considering 1 bit that means I want to add 0 and say 1 this is 1 bit 2 1 bit. Now, what I want? So, these are the two opponents. Now, if we add this thing say I am, I am getting 0 plus 1 say my sum is 1 currently we assume and that say carry is 0. So, this is my this is my sum this is my sum. What is my carry? This is a, this I am telling the carry output carry output is 0. Why carry output is needed? Because if it is it is for 1 bit if it is for 2 bit if it is for 2 bit then I know that I have to add this thing and the carry will be added with the next bit. So, that carry output will be propagated. So, I need carry output. Now, when we are considering the uh, sum of these two bits see here it is two operands another operand is actually there that is my carry input that is my 
carry input. So, this is illustrated in here the two operand inputs a b a carry input c a carry output c o a sum output s. So, the same thing that if algorithm level description say algorithmically we are telling step wise so, the, actually I am defining a module say a module and this is a carry module carry module this is a carry output that means as if one subsystem I am defining and these are the three inputs why three inputs that input a b c a b are the operands and c is the carry in. So, there are the th these are the three inputs and then that this assign say some some using this is my behavior that function that how I can generate this um, carry output from here. So, if I see only the carry output that means the way we have designed the digital system that this is my carry module or you can tell that this is my subsystem that carry module it has three inputs these are my a and b that that I want to add that from the previous one another c is coming that is my carry in this is my carry in and only one output that carry out. So, this is inputs outputs behavior that this is a system. Now, that is a structural representation. So, structural representation specifies how components are interconnected to perform a certain function or achieve a designated behavior. In general, the description is a list of modules and their interconnects often called net list. That as if I have a number of modules and the it, 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 there are some interconnections between them specific interconnections that together form a another larger module and that gives the structural representation of the system. So, at the structural level the levels of abstractions are the module level, the gate level and the switch level. The module level already we discussed then it is module can be realized by gates, gates can be realized by transistors actually in between I can write another transistors. Transistors can be mainly nothing by but the switch actually switch and transistor are same the transistors are nothing but switch not on or off. Now, pictorially if we see the same example. So, this is my 4 bit adder this is my 4 bit adder. This is a four bit, four bit adder. Now, it is partitioned into four one bit adder. So, these are all this level, this is a all one bit adder. Now, one bit adder what will be the um, components? So, there will be some I have to I have to realize a carry I have to realize a sum. So, one carry output and one sum. So, for each one it is same that carry and sum. So, in this way I can say a 4 bit adder I can uh, hierarchically I can uh, implement. And another thing you just notice see here the all carry and sums that uh, modules are same similar structure. So, this what we mentioned that this is the duplicate of modules and in digital design mainly this is the advantage that same type of one large systems can be realized by a similar modules and it is very uh, important or it is very advantageous 
to fabricate the similar modules uh, in a smaller area that what we call that uh, VLSI or simple ICs also. Now, uh, the last step that physical representation means that in an IC process the lowest level of physical specification is the photo mask information means that physical representation means that the full system it is part partitioned into blocks then it is uh, realized by gate then it is realized by transistors and now that we are using the CAT tools means all the things are automated this is uh, digital automation. So, just to get a IC a digital IC that in the fab lab we have to send the photo mask information means that which transistors will be fabricated on the silicon and how this is nothing but a photo mask information. So, this is required by the various processing steps in the fabrication process. Now, at the module level the physical layout for the 4 bit adder the example I have given may be defined by a rectangle or polygon that specifies the outer boundary of all the geometry for the adder. Because uh, actually if I want to design a 4 bit adder that is nothing but a when we will see this is a piece of silicon say a rectangle silicon piece. Then the when the 4 bit adder now 4 bit adder means that a set of transistors. So, we in the 4 bit uh, piece of silicon on the piece of silicon that how the transistors are fabricated and where what will be the placing mainly that is the that information is the photo mask information and this is the set of sub modules and collection of ports mainly that information we have to send to the fab. So, now uh, the main thing that if I want to summarize that main thing what uh, is uh, um, there that given a digital system that or if uh, my aim is to implement a digital design that starting from the problem that how I get the, um, the actual realization by transistors and then how it is fabricated to a IC this full thing starting from the design problem to from the IC this we are telling that design flow mainly for this design flow because for the size and complexity of the um, current day, uh, digital designs we are using the CAT tools and, uh, and this is called the uh, this called the design flow. So, pictorially we can just again we can summarize see uh, that these are my um, design idea. So, first we we'll start with the this is called the design entry this is my this is my design entry. So, for that what we need we need one hardware description language normally VHDL or Verilog that is the VHDL or Verilog is needed ok if we start writing then from the design entry that for this design entry say very log or VHDL means these are my um, HDL this is the HDL that is needed hardware description language some programming. Now, from there I 
got my net list that means the how the gates are connected so the gates and the connection between the uh, gates also it can be not gate it can be a module also that means some modules and the interconnections so net list we are defining So, uh, net list now I know I want I want uh, net list means that is some modules and interconnections. And then it is uh, these are we call the logical design this is the logical design and then again it is partitioned into some smaller blocks and these actually the chip these I am telling that this is my this is my chip and again from this chip this is some actually in the chip the smaller blocks are there that uh, or mod smaller modules are there and from there actually the logic cells are here. So, this we are calling our physical design that so, this is my physical design up to this this is physical design and this is my this is my logical design this is my logical design logical design. So, this is the overall introduction of our digital system design course. So, next day we will start the course. start discussing on digital logic part 1, but before that uh, I want to revisit a quick uh, summary of the uh, previous two lectures. Uh, mainly the um, uh, previous two lectures I uh, gave the introduction of digital um, system design, what do we mean by the digital design. So, starting from the design idea that uh, if I want the digital IC, so first it should be the, the behavioral description means that given the problem, how I describe the behavior of my problem. Normally nowadays the CAT tools are used for that purposes. 